there or was there a network of UFOs orbiting the Earth and did that have anything to do with nuclear weapons? Well, that is what a new scientific paper alleges. So let's talk about it. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, of course, we're talking about the work of Beatrice Villarreal. Uh, I've talked about her uh, recently. She's uh, uh, been making waves uh, with this information leading up to this information. And uh, the big reveal, I think, has, uh, has, is upon us now. And everybody's talking about it. Uh, you know, Skywatch, um, Dave Smithhurst, uh, Merrick von Rennenkamp. Uh, and there's a nice article written about her. Mike Disclosure has a good breakdown of, of the information. Uh, but let's go to the article. Okay. From uh, Gene Sisko, or uh, St Sticko, excuse me, the sky grid theory. How VROL's transients may reveal a pre-space age orbital platform. This is, this is nuts, guys. What if the space race didn't start with Sputnik? For decades, we've told ourselves that the space age began on October 4th, 1957. That's when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 into low Earth orbit. But new evidence suggests we may need to rewrite history because someone or something may have been up there before us. In the clues, they were hiding in plain sight, captured by 1950s sky surveys and revisited by modern astronomers using AI. But the bigger breakthrough came when those mysterious flashes in the sky found a match in the unlikeliest of places, a Cold War engineer's forgotten notebook. Except his theory seemed to reach back further. They suggest a lineage of ideas and experiments that predate the Cold War itself. In 2022, astronomer Beatrice Villarreal and her colleagues published a study in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society that quietly cracked open a cosmic mystery. By analyzing old photographic plates from the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey, taken between 1949 and 58, they found thousands of unexplained star-like points of light that appeared in a single 50-minute exposure and then vanished. These weren't meteors. They weren't camera defects. They weren't known satellites. In fact, they predate the launch of Sputnik. What's more, some of them appeared to align in structured bands. Most only showed, showed up when the region of sky was illuminated by sunlight, and none appeared within her shadow. These anomalies, dubbed transients, were like silent flashes from nowhere. The team ruled out known natural or instrumental explanations. Then, in 2025, VROL and statistician Stephen Bruhl published a preprint that went further. And that's this article, this paper, the scientific paper right here. And I've, you know, uh, breezed through it, uh, skimmed through it. It's very dry, which is why I'm reading <laughs> the article. Um, the, data, the data was noisy, but statistically robust. Uh, yeah, they, they found transients were 45% more likely to appear within a day of nuclear detonations. They correlate with spikes in global UAP sightings. Uh, their presence declined after 1956, just as UFOs around nuclear sites also sharply dropped off. Uh, NASA played a background role in all of this. Funding the digitization, I can say that word, of uh, the plates, hosting the data through affiliated archives, and developing a modern survey infrastructure that helped confirm the transients were not stars or known objects. But NASA itself has never publicly investigated or responded to these anomalies. Well, of course not. And this gets really interesting uh, because it ties in with the work of the Soviet uh, aerospace engineer. I'm not even going to try to say his name, guys. Uh, Valeridge. And yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you have fun with that, that name there. Uh, but he had some theories about UFOs uh, and propulsion systems and stuff that 
might explain exactly what Beatrice is finding. Solenoidal propulsion systems, electromagnetic coils generating thrust and station keeping via structured vacuum interactions, lattice surfaces designed to become visible only at certain solar angles or wavelengths, which explains why the transients were only visible uh, at certain times. Grid orbital mechanics, stable formations and geosynchronous or resonant orbits configured for passive longevity. Uh, you know, things that would stay up there for a while. Vacuum harmonics and resonance, use of Earth's magnetic field and atmospheric resonances to enable sustained non-propellant movement or stasis. It's not science fiction, it's crude Soviet-era engineering theory, handwritten in Russian, grounded in alternate electromagnetic physics, and now translated and annotated by his daughter and a small research team. What emerges is a speculative but coherent hypothesis. Uh, he was describing a real system, one we may have unknowingly photographed in the 1950s and has gone unrecognized ever since. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, the, the confluence of Via Roel's findings uh, from these old plates in this Russian aerospace engineer's theories about how some of this stuff might have worked goes really well together. Really fascinating. Others are talking about this and trying to make sense of this, of these, you know, anomalous objects, these uh, UFOs, let's just call them UFOs, uh, that have, um, that were at that time up there before we even had our own satellites up there. And that their appearance and reappearance seems to have, uh, you know, aligned with our nuclear testing uh, and so on really interesting and you know obviously we know ufos are interested in our nukes they always have been maybe they always will be they're interested in nuclear powered stuff as well uh maybe they're keeping an eye on what we're doing making sure we don't get out of control with that technology uh various beings have told experiencers that yeah if there's a, a world war three with nukes that they will indeed intervene but if that happens, we will cede control of the earth, that they will step in. They will be the parents taking away the matches and putting us in a corner. We will no longer be the custodians of the earth if we have ever been. Uh, we will no longer be in charge of our own destinies. Uh, they will be in charge if they have to intervene at that level. Uh, that's what they've told various experiencers. Is that true? Man, I hope we never have to find out. David Smither says if Beatrice's research is correct and statistically it looks like it is, that there was a grid of orbiting non-known civilization craft satellites in near or low Earth orbit uh, at a time when we had nothing up there, then we must assume that it's highly likely the U.S. government knew about this in the 1950s through Earth-based observation and detection. If we further assume that grid that the grid persisted, then it's a certainty that when the IS and other launch satellite and then craft and all the other sophisticated stuff they discovered uh, this grid they discovered this grid then. Uh, so yeah, when did they, they discover this? Uh, you know who knows? Obviously UFOs are still here. So if this activity declined after the 1950s, you know this orbital activity. It, that's interesting because that also aligns with, you know, the uh, tapering off of the major UFO flaps that people were observing back then. But clearly UFOs didn't go anywhere. Uh, they may have been less visible and they may have been making themselves more visible to make a point. I think that's very likely. Possibly what we're observing today with, you know, swarms of orbs over U.S. warships, mystery drones over U.S. installations, uh, you know, on land and so on. You know, the Tic Tac swarm, you know, that was a fleet of UFOs, um, you know, the uh, giant pyramids over another U U.S. warship. So, you know, that's a, a pattern of behavior of objects making their presence known to U.S. forces specifically. Obviously a global phenomenon, but they seem to be trying to send a message specifically uh, to somebody in the U.S. or some faction in the U.S. Likely, I think, the UFO control group. 
But, you know, let me know your theories in the comments below. But it's definitely a pattern of activity that we're seeing uh, in the last, you know, couple of decades. A very, you know, uh, pre, you know an ongoing uh, pattern of activity that, you know, appears and manifests in different ways at different times. Sometimes, again, it's orbs over the, the warship. Sometimes it's mystery drones. Sometimes it's a flying pyramid. So fascinating stuff and you know there's military footage of those things now Vern sent me this really interesting uh, conversation that he had with chat gpt trying to put beatrice via royale's research together with the pattern of behavior observed by dr robert shipe of california you know of, of dragon ufo fame uh and also patrick jackson's uh, sphere network theory and this is what chat gpt had to say trying to put some pieces together key overlaps alignment and coordination all three describe structured or intelligent patterns, whether that's geometric alignment, VROL, coordinated grid behavior, Jackson, or formation flying behavior, Shipe. I don't know if the dragon UFOs typically fly in formation, although sometimes they are, there are multiple of them, so I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, but moving on, unknown but technological signature. All imply that these objects don't fit standard aerospace, astronomical, or biological models. High-speed evasive maneuvers or sudden disappearances. Shipe's dragon UAPs and Jackson spheres behave in a way that mimics intelligence. Vanishing instantly, uh, appearing briefly, avoiding detection. Possibly self-regulating or cloaked. None of the authors believe these objects are accidental or unregulated. If they're here, they're here for a reason, and they manage visibility intentionally. The big picture. If you synthesize all three, you arrive at this. A large, possibly ancient, or post-biological network of small, intelligent aerial objects is actively operating in Earth's atmosphere in near-space environment likely serving a surveillance regulatory, regulatory or protective function. Uh, could be, of course, no, we can't discuss any of this without talking about beings. <laughs> uh, we're not just dealing with drones or robots uh, or post-biological things. There, there are biological elements of this. Now, some of those biologics are likely clones or hybrids or created beings that are very fused with technology to, to the point where you can't tell what's technological and what's flesh and blood. Uh, but there are beings associated with this. Uh, we're not dealing with a bunch of robots, um, but we are dealing with a pattern of behavior and the VROL uh, data and, you know, the mystery drones and the orb swarms over the USS Omaha, the fleet of Tic Tacs uh, near the Nimitz in 2004. A uh, really fascinating pattern of behavior uh, that is, like ChatGPT says, making itself visible when it wants to. Why does it make itself visible when it wants to? Why did it choose those specific times to make itself visible? Uh, did it make itself visible to the instruments back in the 1950s, knowing perhaps that someday somebody would discover this? Maybe it didn't make itself visible back then. Maybe it just got caught because it didn't think anybody had the technology to observe it back in the day. Either way, great work from uh, Beatrice Viorel for uh, observing and uh, detecting this really interesting pattern of UFO behavior that predated Sputnik and human satellites. So obviously not satellites, obviously, you know, nothing explicable and really fascinating that the sighting spiked uh, around nuclear testing. Not surprising given the you know pattern of behavior of UFOs over the years in relation to nukes that is still ongoing, but fascinating nonetheless. I hope Beatrice is able to get this peer reviewed and I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it all in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below 
or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thanks. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.